today I'm at Leeds Wildlife Photography Highs, which is fantastic for jays, particularly this time of year, I think November, they really start to get active. I'm going to be trying to photograph jays in flight, and if I'm lucky, I might get sparrowhawk. And I'm going to show you the techniques that I'm using, I'm even going to show you my failures, I'm sure I'll get some failures on this kind of shoot, uh, but hopefully I'll get some successes to show you as well. What I'm doing here, I'm trying to use the peanuts kind of strategically. What I'm trying to do is ideally get the jay flying towards me, not necessarily straight on, maybe at a slight angle. I've got a distant perch and then a perch that's closer to the hide. So I've put peanuts on both those perches and kind of scattered them around the bottom of the perch on the ground as well. Hopefully the jay is going to fly from the distant perch onto the nearer perch towards the camera and that's how I'm going to get the flight shots. But Bird photography doesn't just work like that, it's not magic, um, it's not as simple as that, you can't guarantee anything in wildlife photography. I'm actually going to just try and track it because I really want to test this focus and test the camera, see how it goes, so I'm just going to try and track the bird as best I can. The different focus options I've got, kind of different focus areas and then I've got the, the eye tracking as well which focuses on the bird's eye, got those different options. Now I'm actually today, I'm going to use this one here. Uh, large zone AF horizontal. Now I've used this before and I was just amazed at how well it worked, I was really surprised. It still goes for the eye um, but then it kind of, it has a larger box to kind of aid it. If it can't find the eye um, then that box seems to track really well. And definitely electronic shutter because this is likely to be very very fast. Electronic shutter on this gives me 20 frames a second. Like I said, nothing is guaranteed in bird photography and it's not always the bird that you're after that's going to come first. There is a J right now. There's a J up in that willow tree. It'll come down. I might be getting a few effects of rolling shutter, so let me know what you think about that. Um, I think I have seen it, but I think sometimes I struggle to tell if it's rolling shutter or not. Um, but I feel like I'm getting a few funky effects with wingtips and things like that. Jay just came down and it swooped down low to the ground and then it came up. And I'm going to use manual exposure today and I'm choosing a shutter speed of one two thousandth of a second, which might not be fast enough. See how we go. Um, aperture, this is a 300mm f4 lens, so widest aperture is f4. But what I'm doing is closing down a bit, so I'm using f5, um, closing down to f5, just to give me a little bit more depth of field. So if the focus doesn't quite get on the bird, it's like I've got a little bit more depth of field. Um, it's like a little bit of a safety net rather than shooting wide open. I'm doing auto ISO today, 
And simply the reason that here uh, the light can be different depending where the bird is. So if I use auto ISO, um, I don't have to worry about that. And it tends to work pretty well here. Having said that, I'm also adding a bit of underexposure. And that's because a lot of these backgrounds are kind of on the dark side. The whites on the J's um, can re reflect a lot of light, possibly blow out. But minus a third is what I'm doing. That was amazing. Um, Jay came down. It came from the willow tree, so it, it didn't go from the perch where I wanted. And then it flew down by this log pile. I think it flew onto the log pile. And then it hopped about. They do a lot of hopping jays. They seem to enjoy hopping about. And it was kind of hopping around that pile, and then it hopped onto, it came forward, it jumped, and it kind of semi-flew forward towards the camera. Um, I just had the focus on it, I just stayed on it and fired and the shot, I can't believe, like one of the shots is absolutely razor sharp, I can't believe it. Trying to get erratic subjects like this that change direction and speed all the time is just the biggest challenge. It's the biggest challenge for you and for the camera and the lens. The idea that I had with the two perches and trying to get the J like flying from one to the other, it's, it's just not really worked out. That jay then just spent a lot of time around that sort of log pile and there's a few peanuts in there it's just kind of searching I think lots of jumping and hopping around so I did get quite a few shots of that I think or I tried to so I think some of the shots I've got today um, they're more kind of jumping and diving shots rather than flight shots but I just really want to get those proper flight shots get them higher up I want to get in pure flight The light levels have definitely gone up a bit now, it's got a bit brighter, so that means I can change my settings, I can get slightly better settings. So I've actually upped the shutter speed now to 3200, uh, closed the aperture down to f6.3 to give me even a little bit more depth of field, <clears throat> and even at that the ISO is only about 2500, so it's significantly brighter than it was. There's a song thrush. There's a song thrush on the ground. Move slowly. Just to interrupt this video briefly because I've got opportunities to join me in Serbia and Bulgaria, uh, a couple of bird photography tours next year. There's a couple of places for May and June. If you're interested in that, then just click the link that's in the description below. If you have any questions, just send me an email.
Oh, it's all happening. There's loads of stuff going on there. Got a house sparrow, green finch on the pool. And also, there was a predator, well, there was a sparrow hawk flew through. I think it was a female. Um, there was a bit of commotion, and all the birds went quiet, and then a sparrow hawk flew right through. Didn't catch anything or come close. But this great spotted woodpecker at the moment is staying absolutely stock still. And this is what they'll do sometimes. It's just simply a defense mechanism. It's just to stay as still as you can. So it's, it's clamped to the side of this tree, absolutely not moving an inch, just not moving a muscle. And it'll do that until it feels safe and ready to go back to business. Wow, that, that was fascinating. So I could hear a really strange sound and it sounds like an owl. I mean, it sounds a bit like a tawny owl, or even a little owl, but I can't quite make out what it is. It's right behind the hide. And then a jay flies in, and I can still hear that owl sound. And then I look at the jay, and I can see the jay's throat moving, and it's the jay making the sound. So if you don't know that about jays, they are actually mimics, and starlings do this a lot, but jays are very good at it. So jays will actually imitate other birds or the bird calls, bird calls that they hear. So I've heard jays imitate buzzards for sure. Um, that one was imitating an owl. Yeah, so I don't know why they do it, but it's very, very interesting. I'm gonna put some of my failures up on the screen now so you can see the ones that just didn't quite work out for whatever reason. Uh, either it was me or the camera just didn't quite cope. If you'd like to use this photography hide, then check out the details and websites up on the screen at the moment. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. That was a kestrel. Oh my goodness. That was a male kestrel that just attacked the birds, that just took a chance and tried to take one of the small birds. That was mental.